Next Sunday, we are joined by Reverend Johnny Douglas, uh, who is vicar of St. Peter's in Hextable in Kent, a great friend of mine, a man who is, uh, has been leading a church like ours for a few years and has seen some wonderful growth there. So looking forward to hearing from him, a man full of the spirit, full of life, uh, motivational. Uh, don't miss next Sunday at both our services, 9 and 10.30. And in two weeks' time, on Sunday the 28th, we are hosting the uh, first in a very long time Newcomers Welcome Lunch. If you're new to us here at St. Augustine's, uh, perhaps in the last year or 18 months, maybe even longer than that, uh, we'd love to properly welcome you uh, around a meal directly after our 10.30 service on the 28th. Uh, we'd love to know that you're coming. Uh, so again, have a word with me after the service or one of our welcome team, and uh, we'll look forward to seeing you there for our newcomers lunch. As I said, Remembrance Sunday is a unique Sunday. We do things a little different to normal in order to give respectful remembrance to the men and women who sacrifice their freedom and very often their lives uh, for ours. Not only in two great world wars, but in many conflicts since then. Let us confess to God the sins and shortcomings of the world, acknowledging our own failure to seek and establish that peace which God longs for all people to know. So we say together, God of peace, Forgive us when we have participated in that which turns people against each other, for fueling anger and harbouring vengeance, for not heeding your call to love one another. Inspire us never to give up on the hope that your life offers us and the courage to see past war and desolation and live for the day when it will be peace. Amen. May the God of love and power forgive you and free you from your sins, heal and strengthen you by his spirit, and raise you to new life in Christ our Lord. Amen. St. Augustine didn't become a parish until 1927, so here we read the names of those servicemen from our parish who died in the Second World War and whose names are on the war memorial in the chapel. They shall not grow old, as we that are left grow old. Age shall not weary them, nor the years condemn. At the going down of the sun and in the morning, we will remember them.
When you go home, tell them of us and say, for their tomorrow we gave our today. Ever-living God, we remember those whom you have gathered from the storm of war into the peace of your presence. May that same peace calm our fears, bring justice to all peoples, and establish harmony among the nations. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. So we turn to God's Word in the Bible. We have two short readings this morning. I'm going to read from Paul's letter to the Romans, chapter 5, but first, just two verses uh, from the Gospel of John and chapter 15. Gospel of John 15, very familiar verses, the words of Jesus. My command is this, love each other as I have loved you. Greater love has no one than this, to lay down one's life for one's friends. And from Paul's letter to the Romans, chapter 5, starting at verse 6. You see, at just the right time, when we were still powerless, Christ died for the ungodly. Very rarely will anyone die for a righteous person, though for a good person, someone might possibly dare to die. But God demonstrates his own love for us in this. While we were still sinners, Christ died for us. Since we have now been justified by his blood, how much more shall we be saved from God's wrath through him? For if while we were God's enemies, we were reconciled to him through the death of his son, how much more, having been reconciled, shall we be saved through his life? Not only is this so, but we also boast in God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom we have now received reconciliation. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Preaching on Remembrance Sunday, I've always found to be rather nerve-wracking. Last year was even more nerve-wracking than ever. It was my first sermon here at St. Augustine's uh, as vicar. Some of you were there, but most of you weren't, because if you remember, we'd just gone back into another lockdown. And apart from a few so-called essential personnel, everyone was watching from home. How long ago does that seem? (laughs) But it wasn't just last year. I always find preaching on Remembrance Sunday nerve-wracking because I feel so unqualified to speak on this subject. I've never served. I've never actually lost anyone close to me in armed conflict. Whatever my personal feelings are about war or wars, I don't feel like I can speak with any real authority on the subject. But I know a man who does. Um, It's this guy, my friend Alex. He's on the far right. You can see me there, I am on the left. This was taken earlier this week on a retreat the four of us had. Alex on the far right. Alex trained with me to be a vicar. Uh, But before he started that, he was a captain in the Royal Engineers. He did two tours of Afghanistan. He is a man who has got something to say on this subject. And Alex has shown me that really the sermon for Remembrance Sunday ought to be the most simple sermon of the year. And the reason it ought to be simple is contained in Jesus' words, which we heard a moment ago. Greater love has no one than this, than to lay down one's life for one's friends. Today, Remembrance Sunday, we respect and we honor the sacrifice of men and women who throughout history have served in the armed forces, in wars and conflicts, on battlefields, in trenches, in, on bases, in deserts, very often at the cost of their own lives. And we give great respect and honor to them for that. We remember them, and it's right that we do. 
Because what they did, what they do, is an act of love. Alex had first-hand experience of this. He told me that the greatest example of human love he ever witnessed was, was when one of his young soldiers ran out of cover into open enemy fire to drag his seriously wounded section commander back into safety. He had no regard for his own well-being, Alex said to me, only that of his friend. And what Alex witnessed that day is, is no exceptional thing in the field of human conflict. It's probably been repeated thousands, hundreds of thousands, maybe millions of times, many times in some of our favorite books and movies. It's an act of unfathomable sacrifice, something that we cannot compute, we can't get our heads around, something which leaves us speechless and stunned. Because war is not part of heaven's plan for earth. Armed conflict is evil. The destruction of human life is evil. I think we will all agree on that. At least a hundred million people died in the wars of the 20th century. Every one of those lives was precious to God. Every one of those lives was made in the image of God. And human beings made in the image of God never have the right to take life from one another. That much is clear. And yet, even in the midst of that, amidst all of the conflicted logic and emotion of war, Jesus would see the heart behind the sacrifice of Alex's friend. And just as Alex did, he would commend it. He would commend it as an act of love. Greater love has no one than this, to lay down one's life for one's friend. Jesus interprets it as an act of love when a person willingly, freely gives up everything they have, their own life, their own freedom for the sake of another. So here's why the Remembrance Sunday talk ought to be the simplest of them all. Because that amazing, honorable sacrifice, which we cannot compute or get our heads around, which leaves us speechless and stunned, that sacrifice leads us directly to another act of love, which, without diminishing for a second anything of what those who have given their lives for us in war did, is a more astonishing sacrifice. Because while Alex's cadet and our 34 fallen servicemen and millions of others, while they died for their friends, the Lord Jesus, who commends their sacrifice, he died for his enemies. Listen to the Apostle Paul again in our reading from Romans. Very rarely will anyone die for a righteous person. For a good person, someone might possibly dare to die. But God demonstrates his love for us in this, that while we were still sinners, while we were still enemies of God, Christ died for us. We were enemies of God. We were on the opposing side of the war. But Jesus crossed the battlefield for us and offered his life to save us when we needed saving. He's done it for all of us, but the truth is he would have done it for any one of us. Such is the measure of his love. And as the song we just sang went, crucified, laid behind a stone, you lived to die, rejected and alone, like a rose trampled on the ground, you took the fall. He took our fall. And you thought of me above all. Jesus gave his life for us, for those who were his enemies. And in doing it, 
He turned something hideous and awful into something beautiful and lovely. As someone put it very beautifully, he has made flowers bloom on the battlefield. And of course, a flower is the enduring symbol of remembrance. Poppies are the traditional symbol of Remembrance Day. I imagine most of us have one pinned to our chest. There's the uh, classic paper and plastic variety. Many of us are wearing knitted ones. That's one that my wife knitted. And Reuben, my son, he made a Lego one this week. Isn't that cool? Here's Ipswich town centre being lit up this week. Can't see the poppy terribly clearly, but it's there in the middle for Remembrance Day. And you might know that this year, 2021, is a, a special anniversary of the poppy. Did you know it's exactly 100 years this year since poppies were first made and sold to raise funds for the Royal British Legion? And it's an enduring symbol. It's one we've kept hold of for 100 years because it reminds us, it helps us to remember. It takes us right back to the First World War, the first mechanized modern war where there was so much bloodshed, so much loss of life, so much self-sacrifice. The story of the poppy, you may well know, it, it dates back to the First World War, to 1915 when a Canadian doctor, after burying one of his comrades... Notice poppies growing up around the grave. And he wrote a very famous poem. I'll read some to you. In Flanders fields the poppies blow Between the crosses row on row That mark our place. And in the sky the larks still bravely singing fly Scarce heard amid the guns below. Poppies. I said this should be a simple talk, and the poppy gives us the simplest of all pictures to remember on Remembrance Day and Remembrance Sunday. Every poppy is black and red. The blackness at its heart reminds us of the blackness of all of our hearts, of all human hearts. The darkness, the grasping and deceitful heart, as the Bible says, that's at the center of all of us that from it flows all of our selfishness, all of our greed, and then fear and anxiety, distrust of one another, the desire, the grasping desire for power and control, which inevitably, history shows us, leads to discrimination and prejudice, leads to injustice, leads to cruelty and violence, ultimately death, devastation of war. The blackness at the heart of all of us, the Bible calls sin, and it leads to death. But then we see the blackness surrounded by a bloom of bright red. Red, the color of blood. Blood, the stuff of life. And it reminds us of blood shed at the cost of many, many lives for the good of many, many more lives. And more astonishingly, it reminds us of blood shed at the cost of one perfect, precious, righteous life, Jesus' life, for many, many, many unrighteous, sinful lives. Blood shed in pain at the cross. God taking upon himself all of our evil, all of our sickness, all of our sin, and overcoming it, bringing forgiveness and peace and hope again. And through it all, and here's the simple truth we must remember on Remembrance Sunday, God demonstrates his love for us in this. When we were still enemies of God, Christ died for us. love to read you a poem, and it's a poem that was written by Alex, who I showed you on the screen, my friend. He reads it uh, in church on Remembrance Day, and he's kindly allowed me to read it to you this morning. 
It's called We Promised That We Would Remember Them. We promised that we would remember them as we stood in formed ranks of men. We promised that we would remember them, the ones we would never see again. We promised that we would remember them, the ones who paid the price. We promised that we would remember them as their lives were taken in sacrifice. As we stood there in the Afghan blazing sun, we cried as our friends were taken from our side. Men and boys who were far too young to know, it's on this day we remember to never let their memory go. We did not know why we were there. They always changed the reason. But friends are lost and wounded now. There's no turning back the season. Mothers left crying for the loss of their darling girl or boy whose limbs and bodies were broken by man's desire to destroy. We promised that we would remember them, even as the years pass us by. We promised that we would remember them. As we do, we hold back the cry. We promised that we would remember them in that far-off, distant place. We promised that we would remember them as we continue to run the race. Lives were lost and broken in the filthy Afghan dust, it's not just the ones who were left behind who may never regain their trust. It's the boys who rallied to revive their friends who have witnessed far too much. It's the boys who return back home that need a healing touch. Young boys and men who carried coffins with tears burning in their eye. Young boys and men who carried coffins gaze around and look up at the sky. They cry out in the dark, where is the hope? Where is the light? They cry out in desperation, wounded by the past in their sight. We promised that we would remember them, those who lost their lives. We promised that we would remember them, their costly sacrifice. But how do we serve the ones alive, still here, hurting and lost? How do we serve the ones who've witnessed bloodshed at such a cost? I call out to those of us here, alive and well today, Let's fall upon our knees and to our Father in heaven pray to open eyes blinded by hurt, blood, sand, gun, and proclaim the glory of God's only begotten Son. There is only one true healing in this life. There is only one hope that can relieve the pain and strife. It's a free gift of grace from the Father who came to pay the cost to bear our burden of sin and give fresh hope to the lost. So, friends, please, as you pin your poppy on your chest, I ask that you will remember the lives that are taken, but pray for those who suffer still. Young men who were sent to a war very far away, young men who saw those they loved die, for them, I beg, please pray. We promised that we would remember them as we stood in formed ranks of men. We promised that we would remember them, the ones we will never see again. We promised that we would remember them. That's why I am here today. We promised that we would remember them, those we loved that were taken away. We promised that we would remember them as we grow old throughout the years. We promised that we would remember them as we look back through a veil of tears. Let's pray. Thank you, Heavenly Father, for the good news that Jesus' blood was shed for the sins of the world, the red absorbing the black, flowers blooming on the battlefield, grace overthrowing evil, love stronger than death. Help us this morning to know more surely than ever this love demonstrated on the cross of Christ and to trust him for our salvation today. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. 
Well, we're going to sing again in a moment, but first of all, is there something for us to look at from the young people yet? Do you, to, do you want to come and show us, Matt? These guys have been beavering away on an act of creative worship during the service. Really looking forward to seeing it. Great stuff. This is only about half of them. Um, so I was, I was praying about, you know, what, what we should make this morning. And uh, it's very appropriate that Jesus said, or God said to me, do, do poppies. Um, I couldn't for the life of me get red paper. <laughs> so we've, we've ended up with all these beautiful colours. Um, but I was just saying to, to the youth, it um, feels a little bit like kind of winging it. But... It almost leads you to think about each of the individuals that have lost their lives. Yeah. Um, and each of the individual that's made, made this this morning as well has thought about the combination of, of colours and stuff. Um, yeah. That's, that's what we've been up to. Beautiful. So there's going to be some more added to that? I guess so, if we can get this back down there. Yeah. Time. <laughs> we love it. Thank you so much, guys. Thank you so much for sharing that with us this morning. And stick it on there. Oh, yeah. <laughs> We're going to stand and sing again together uh, a hymn, Lord for the Years. And uh, as we uh, close the hymn, the scouts are going to come and grab their flags. So, can I invite you to stand up, please? And we're going to sing Lord for the Years.
as we stand, let us commit ourselves to responsible living and faithful service. Will you strive for all that makes for peace? Will you seek to heal the wounds of war? Will you work for a just future for all humanity? Merciful God, we offer to you the fears in us that have not yet been cast out by love. May we accept the hope you have placed in the hearts of all people and live lives of justice, courage and mercy. Through Jesus Christ, our risen Redeemer. Amen. Our service for Remembrance Sunday comes to an end. I'm very grateful to all who have made this service possible this morning and to all for joining us here in person or online. We close with a blessing and then a final hymn during which the colours will be returned to the back. Go forth into the world in peace. Be of good courage. Hold fast to that which is good. Render to no one evil for evil. Strengthen the faint-hearted. Support the weak. Help the afflicted. Honour everyone. Love and serve the Lord, rejoicing in the power of the Holy Spirit. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you and those you love, now and always. Amen. We close with a hymn. Go forth and tell.
So go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen. Thank you.